part of our curriculum is problem solving. And we got these new, new 3D printers from our administration and I really want to do something with them rather than just having the kids print, you know, simple little things that they design on Inventor. I said, I want the kids to do something really problem based. Started looking online and I found a problem solving contest that involved assistive technology and I thought that it would be perfect. When they mentioned the project, I was really nervous. I was like, where am I going to come up with an idea for an assistive technology? Um, that was such a broad category to me that I was dumbfounded at first, but the thought creeped into my head. The first thing that kind of popped in my head was these pencil grips. The kids are coming in from preschools and from kindergarten, then they don't really use those pencils. Um, you know, it's mostly, it's a lot of technology. So they're really struggling with being able to hold a pencil correctly. If you don't have good control over your pencil, the quality of your work, the accuracy of your work is really going to decrease. I wanted to design something that was universal and could be used by multiple people in multiple different ways. And so it was the big goal for it to help people. And that, helping people is such a big part of my personality. It's taken a long time to realize that, but it's just, it's a good feeling to help people. I met her, we had a really great conversation. She explained to me um, herself kind of growing up, she had difficulties in the area of occupational therapy. So it was, became kind of a personal project for her too, thinking she had said to me, oh, I kind of wish I had something like this. There were many iterations, there were lots of mess ups, there were um, just, little things in the design process that make the bigger picture really shine. Abigail had a, just a determination to succeed. Her willingness to keep going, her willingness not to say no, and you know, just her ability to not fail. Okay? She, wasn't, she wasn't happy with being mediocre or having something okay. okay she wasn't so we just pushed her and, you know, she took that on, she took that challenge on and kept striving for success. Abby had a personal connection to her project and so seeing that made us just kind of push her a little bit further to see how much more she could do with it just because of that strong personal connection to it. There were definitely times where I was pushing her with questions or stretching her learning and that really pushed her out of her comfort zone. When I saw that I had made it into the finals, I was just dumbfounded because I saw just all these projects and I was so scared that it, it wasn't even gonna get in considered. Is it great that she was a finalist in the competition? Absolutely, it's awesome to compete against a global community and do really well. Um, but I think watching her grow as an individual and grow confidently and become more outspoken about design and problem solving to younger students, that was a hundred times better than being a finalist in that international competition. It makes me feel good as a teacher. Um, that's why, you know, I'm sure you can ask all the teachers in the school and that's what they want to see, is their students succeed. Okay, that's the reason we become teachers, to see students learning, to see students succeeding, to, you know, help students Learn. This is my favorite part of the school. I feel most comfortable in this room. This is not only a creative outlet for me, but a place where I can learn how to do things that are going to help me in my future. I've gotten emails from other teachers just thanking me and telling me how great this is and how great what I'm doing is. And it makes me feel really good. If I can inspire kids to want to do what I'm doing right now, then I'll do it any day. <laughs>